Hello and welcome to episode 6 of the Summoner Showcase. Today's topic is our team's beloved front line, our friendly neighborhood tanks. And who is the friendliest of them all? Whose strongest muscle is his heart and best feature his mustache? That description fits only one, the one and only Braum. In this case, Lady Braum to be exact. Tiger D. Reyna's gender-bent Braum keeps hitting cool, frilliard colors. With all of Braum's spirit and his mustache, she is most definitely an amazing female version of our shielded, pearl-loving protector. She even looks like she's searching for troubled comrades that she needs to jump to to protect. Staying in cold lands covered by ice, it's time for 19-year-old Polish cosplayer Yuka Niko to impress with her ice drake Shivana in human form. An elegant and fierce beauty, this half-dragon is a force to be reckoned with. Yuka does a great job of displaying that in her pictures with determined yet graceful poses and expressions. With astonishing love for detail, Yuka has proven herself by implementing this complicated skin into a wearable costume. From the icy cold of the Freljord to the radiant dawn, let me introduce you to Sandy Graffy and her incredible Leona. This Polish cosplayer really puts her skills on display with this intricate and challenging costume. Born to IEM Katowice and Gamescom both in 2014, Leona shows an astonishing love for detail and the materials she's using. She succeeded in making an armor that really looks like armor and shows some signs of wear and tear, like it has seen a few battles in its lifetime. You may want to take the time to stare a little at all the details on the shield. Because she is one of my personal favorites, I am following up Leona with Leona in this Tankalicious episode. Following up Sandy Graffy's beautiful default skin comes Ashley Cosplay's badass Valkyria Leona. Born to Anime Revolution and PAX Prime in the summer of 2014, Ashley loves the feeling of walking around conventions with her prided sword and shield. Made out of war black craft foam, dremel, and many other materials, it took her two months to craft this costume with its stunning color sheen. She considers it to be one of her most fulfilling pieces of art to date. Beside the warm-hearted and radiant tanks, there are also dark figures that lurk among the shadows with their cool lore and awesome designs. How can anyone resist the urge to cosplay something like that? Well, Silverwing cosplay, fueled by Atrox's brutal, elegant campaign of slaughter, took up the difficult challenge and triumphed over it by making this amazing costume. It was a worthy battle to conquer Atrox's proportions and turn him into something real. Black Sheep from Black and Noble Cosplay was really excited to make his Maokai because he wanted to make something with texture, so a lot of research and thinking went into making a realistic bark look. His main technique was upholstery foam which was cut and glued in a maddening process, followed by layers of cheesecloth. Complicated pieces were sculpted out of insulation foam before going through the cheesecloth procedure. He debuted Maokai at Kineticon where he discovered that it was surprisingly comfortable to wear. The only problem were the back branches as people bumped into them and they also made it difficult to sit down. Absolutely amazing is all I can say to this cosplay. Now comes the time for me to end this episode of the Summoner Showcase. Don't forget to check out the cosplayers and photographers pages and tell them how much you love their work. The upcoming theme is Noxus. You can send in your work to summoner.showcase at yahoo.com to be featured in the next episode. This is Alayla Mon, see you on the Fields of Justice. If you've stayed around this long, you might as well just like, share, subscribe, and visit us on our Facebook page. We've started doing super fun monthly cosplay photo contests. Do as you are told, young man or lady!